how I use debt and taxes to build my wealth. You gotta understand, the government wants you in debt. The government wants you to pay taxes. The difference is there is good debt and there is bad debt. The government wants both of these but it depends on who you are, which side of the spectrum you're gonna be on. Are you gonna have debt that pays for itself and makes you more wealthier? Or are you gonna have debt that you have to continuously work for and pay off that makes you poorer? Which one are you? So here's how I'm using debt and taxes to benefit me. So let's say you're going out there to buy a property, right? We're gonna use $100,000 for a very round number. You're buying a $100,000 piece of real estate. There's two ways to buy this property. Number one is you save up 100 grand to buy this one house. It's gonna take you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of savings to save up that much money. The other option is, is to save up 20% of that $100,000 house. So now I only have to save 20 grand. I can do it a lot faster, um, a lot less headaches, a lot less time, and I'm gonna take that $20,000 and I'm gonna buy this $100,000 house. But I'm gonna use a bank to fund the other 80%. So the bank's putting up $80,000 and I'm putting up $20,000. So now I'm able to get into this $100,000 asset using only $20,000 of my money. That's called leverage. It's using other people's money, banks, to leverage yourself into a $100,000 piece of asset when you only use $20,000 of your own money. So this is where the cool stuff starts to happen, right? That $80,000 of debt that you got from a bank, you don't even pay that. Because what happens is, is you're gonna finance that over let's say 25 years. So over the next 25 years, you're gonna make monthly mortgage payments for 25 years to pay that property off. So the reason it's gonna take 25 years is because you're paying interest on that money for them to give you the money to make a return themselves, right? So let's say your monthly mortgage payment is gonna be 500-ish dollars a month that you have to continuously pay. And then in 25 years, you're gonna own that asset free and clear and you never have to make another monthly mortgage payment again. You're gonna rent it for $1,000 a month. So you're gonna have $1,000 coming in and $500 a month going out to your mortgage payment. So here's where it gets significantly better, which is what most people don't think about. That $500 a month is locked in for the next 25 years. So 25 years, you're still gonna be paying that same $500 every single month, every single year until the property gets paid off. So watch this. So if rent increases at just 3% per year, which is very conservative, that same property in five years, the rent is not gonna be $1,000. It's gonna be $1,150. In 10 years, it's not gonna be $1,000. It's gonna be $1,350. In 15 years, it's not gonna be $1,000. It's gonna be $1,550. And again, that's only assuming a 3% increase in rent year over year. So in all honesty, it's probably gonna be way more than that of rental income, but remember, you're still only paying that $500 a month. So although rent goes up, your payment stays the same. So here it is, here's how it starts, and you just keep get making more and more and more money over time. And what puts the icing on the cake on top of all this is the government gives you tax benefits. So let's say you make $3,500 in a year, right? You got a thousand coming in, you got 500 going out, you gotta pay your uh, uh, taxes, you gotta pay your insurance, you may have to, you know, a vacancy and you may have to put out in a new water heater. So you actually make personally net at the end of the year, $3,500. The government allows you to take depreciation on that asset, which means that you take a loss on paper, which you can mathematically roughly talk with the CPA to confirm your exact standing, but you can take roughly a $3,600-ish write-off every single year, which means in real life, you have $3,500 in your pocket. You made $3,500 in profit, but on paper, you lost $3,600 through depreciation meaning that you made zero dollars or negative dollars, which means if you made zero dollars, how much money do you have to pay in taxes? None, there's nothing to pay taxes on because you netted zero dollars. But remember, you still have the $3,500 in your pocket. This is just what it looks like on paper and the government allows you to take that type of depreciation. So when I hear people saying, oh, well, everybody pays taxes, you all gotta pay your fair share, wrong. The government builds this in a way that if you understand it and you use it to your advantage, you can be within that as well. You cannot pay taxes if you do this the correct way through depreciation. So you're starting to see the benefits here and how I've been able to use leverage, right? Getting into more assets with less of my money and use taxes or you know lack of taxes through depreciation to build my wealth. You can do this on single families, you can do this on multi-families, you can do this on commercial properties, you can do this on anything. The strategies say the exact same, 
just the bigger deals you get into, it's not $3,500, it's $35,000. And they go bigger than that, it's not $35,000, it's $350,000. So it's the same strategies, they just start adding more zeros to the end. With more zeros, all that means is more profit to your bottom line. L listen, the system is available. It's here, this is how it works. You just need to understand it and implement it for yourself so you can take advantage of it. So if you wanna learn how I've been able to do this, where I own about 100 rental properties today, all using very little to none of my own money, check out the link in the description below, and I can show you exactly how to do the same thing.